everyone, this is Faith from faithsbizacademy.com. Now, on my YouTube channel, I have right now, as of recording this video, I have three other YouTube videos that are on creating digital planners, okay? Why do I need to talk about them? I need to help you understand why I create these videos and how I'm actually trying to answer the questions left by viewers in the other videos, okay? So the very first one is teaching you how to actually create digital planners in Canva itself by adding hyperlinked tabs, okay? That is the video that started it all. And then after that, I decided to dive into greater detail about creating a digital planner entirely from scratch, including daily, monthly, weekly planner pages, okay? And how I actually moved them and then created a very detailed uh, monthly planner, okay? An undated monthly digital planner with all 31 days, five weeks, and a monthly planner, okay? So that's very detailed, is under 70 minutes, but if you actually watch it through, if you actually follow step-by-step, step, you can create your very own digital planner from scratch, okay? That is the digital planner masterclass in about an hour. And if you watch that particular video, you can also get access to the unicorn digital planner Canva template that I'm giving you, giving you for free. So don't forget to check out that one. But following that, the next question was, what if the digital planner has more than 200 pages? So at that point in time, when I was recording that particular video, Canva had a limit of the number of pages in one single project, and that was 200. And as far as I'm aware, right now, the current page limit per Canva project is at 300 pages. But for example, if you wanna create a very, very detailed digital planner, let's say one page for every day, that will take at least 365 pages, right? So then came along my third YouTube video on digital planners on how to actually create digital planners with more than 200 pages all 300 pages or however many hundred pages that you have in mind, okay? But that was created in response to a question. In fact, many people asked, what are we gonna do if we have more than 200 or 300 pages of digital planner, right? Because what happens is when we do hyperlinks, when we create the tabs in our digital planner using Canva, we can actually hyperlink different pages together. However, if you go beyond the page limit of Canva, you cannot hyperlink between two projects. That's what the issue is. And therefore, in that particular video, I actually show you how I create the main design on Canva, and then after that, export it as a PowerPoint file because that case, if you even if you have multiple projects, let's say you create a very extensive digital planner with more than 200 or 300 pages, you're doing it in separate projects. And then you export each of these individual Canva projects as PowerPoint files. And then after that, combine all those PowerPoint, PowerPoint files together in one single PowerPoint file, okay? So in that video, I walk you through how to do that, how to combine different projects together, how to then add the hyperlink tabs on PowerPoint itself. But then the question came about, what happens for Mac users, okay? Mac users, unfortunately, even if you have PowerPoint, you are not able to do the hyperlinks. Let me reiterate that. You can create the hyperlink tabs on PowerPoint if you are a Mac user. However, when you download that particular pro product, your final digital planner, using a Mac PowerPoint, somehow the hyperlinks don't work, okay? The hyperlinks between the pages fail to work, fail to be incorporated when you download the PDF. Therefore, the next solution is, well, for Apple users, for Mac users, you can use Keynote. Okay, so this particular video is to help you overcome the obstacle specifically for Apple Mac users. Okay, so I still very much love to create the digital planner using Canva because I love that there are lots of features in Canva when it comes to graphic design. So it makes it really easy to add designs, to add different types of graphics and elements to it. So I think design wise, it is easiest and the most fun to actually do it within Canva itself. And for example, because there are tons of Canva templates that you can find, for example, I sell Canva templates too, or if you can just grab the unicorn digital undated planner from me, that is one set of Canva template that you can use, right? Multiply that, duplicate that, and you want to make it into an extensive digital planner, but you're a Mac user, you, can't, you cannot use the PowerPoint, then this video is for you because I'm going to show you how to export the Canva project and import it into Keynote 
so that you can create your hyperlink tabs, okay? <laughs> I know this is a rather lengthy introduction, but I do want to explain to you how I create certain videos because I do want to give back to my audience. I am very responsive in the comment section. If you have any questions, I will reply to you personally and as much as possible, I'm gonna create tutorials that will fit your needs and answer your questions, okay? So if you haven't actually seen those other videos, I strongly encourage you to go back to them because especially the one our digital planner masterclass that is the most detailed in terms of creating a digital planner from scratch so i would strongly suggest that you start from there and after that if you're trying to create a digital planner with more than 300 pages then move on to the other video and then if you are a mac user then this will help you with the hyperlinks okay so this one is not to show you how to create a digital planner from scratch I'm gonna use an existing Canva template, and then the whole idea is just to help our dear friends, our Apple users, to create the hyperlinks in Keynote, okay? So we let's dive on Canva right now, and on my screen is the Unicorn Monthly and Dated Digital Planner template that I was talking about in the introduction just now. You can get this from me for free so that you don't have to start from scratch, okay? And I'm just gonna use it, use this particular template to show you how to quickly edit it, customize it, and then after that, export it in such a way that you can use it in Keynote to add hyperlinks to it. Once again, in this video, I will not be showing you how to create a planner that is more than 200 or 300 pages. The main objective here is if you do encounter creating a digital planner with more than 300 pages, which is beyond the maximum page limit in a single Canva project, and you are a Mac user, then this is how you can export your Canva project import into Keynote and add hyperlinked tabs, okay? So here we have the Unicorn Monthly Undated Planner. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pick several pages. I'm not gonna use the entire planner right here, all right? This has 72 pages. Um, let me make a copy, okay? Or let me just... Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a copy. So typically when I use uh, Canva templates. Like for example, if you're getting this set of Canva templates from me, technically speaking, you can just start editing on it and it will not affect the master copy, my master copy. However, when I use Canva templates myself, what I'll do is I will make a copy so that I do have a copy of the template saved on my own projects and I can always refer back to it if I do need that. Okay, so you can edit it right away, but my preferred practice is to make a copy. So all you have to do is go to file and click on make a copy. So here we have it, copy of Unicorn Monthly. Now go to the grid view because right now I'm just trying to remove pages and just stick with some of the pages that I want, okay? So I'm going to, if you wanna select multiple pages to, to delete them, go to the thumbnail icon right at the bottom right hand corner here, I'm going to hold down the shift key and click to select multiple pages. And after that, I can either hit the bin on the top right hand corner, or I can just hit the delete button on my keyboard. Okay, so it's taking a little while to load. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep a copy of each planner page, one monthly planner, one weekly planner, and one daily planner. So I'm just holding down the shift keys, selecting the first and the last set of pages that I want to delete and just hit the delete button on my keyboard. Here, I'm just going to keep one of the day one planners, scroll down and select this one, delete, and maybe I will keep one page for notes as well. And just deleting everything. Okay, so right now this is empty page. I don't need that. So I do have uh, just five pages. Okay, now one important thing to note is that when you receive my Canva templates, it already comes with hyperlinked tabs, okay? You can feel free to use it as is. What do I mean? So if you have a website that you sell digital products, like you want to include to sell digital planner, all you have to do is go to share and click on download. 
make sure you are selecting PDF so that you can download the PDF, the entire project in PDF, okay? Make sure you don't check this box, okay? This is very important. Do not check the box for flatten PDF. Leave it unchecked because if you check it, if you flatten the PDF, all the hyperlinks are gone, all right? So just do that. Just make sure you don't check the flatten PDF and download it. And this would be you downloading this digital planner as a PDF file and therefore you can then upload this PDF file anywhere else to sell it, okay? This set of templates do come does come with commercial users rights, so it allows you to sell that as is. Um, if you are an Etsy seller, I would strongly encourage you to actually make changes to it, okay? Because Etsy emphasizes on like personalized, like handcrafted kind of products, right? So even if you're actually creating a product from what we call a commercial use templates or private label rights templates, you want to make changes to it, you want to customize it so that your final product will be different from somebody else using the same set of templates. Okay, so there you go. This is the PDF and then the hyperlinks will work. Okay, so one of the very common questions that I receive is also how do we actually use this digital planner? So basically, if you have any tablet with an application that allows you to import and open up PDF files, you can use that to actually use your digital planner. Um, a very popular app is called GoodNotes. You can actually download that app on your tablet and then after that import this digital planner in the PDF file and then because it has note taking abilities you can write you can insert text box that is how you use a stylus an apple pencil to actually write on the digital planner okay so that is how so basically you just need an app that allows you to open PDF and allows you to write stuff on it okay so that is how you use it and the hyperlink tabs actually help you to navigate between pages very quickly and easily without having to swipe all the way right so typically if you're opening the PDF file on your tablet if you want to flip from page to page it's just like how you read an ebook you swipe right you swipe through the pages but imagine if you have hundreds and hundreds of pages you're gonna swipe until your finger turns really sore which is why having these hyperlink tabs helps you jump from one section to the next and therefore saves time of swiping but of course if you want to just move from this page to the next just do the swipe okay so those are just some just to touch on some common questions that I have received okay now back to this Canva template in fact the copy that I made and I already removed most of the pages so one thing to note because I removed the pages the hyperlinks will not work properly anymore right the hyperlinks will only work if the pages are in the correct sequence. So keep that in mind when you're actually customizing the templates. If you're trying to reshuffle the pages, if you're trying to add pages, remove pages, do know that you have to check through all the hyperlinks again because the hyperlinks are linked to specific page numbers in this project. Therefore, if the page sequence is messed up, new pages are added and whatsoever, or pages are deleted, the hyperlinks will not work properly anymore so you have to check through you have to go through the hyperlinks again okay so that is if you are creating all the hyperlinks within canva itself now here once again the objective is to export this canva canva project and import it into keynotes so what i want to do is i want to strip it down further why i'm going to remove the wooden image just hit the delete button in fact i'm going to click and drag all my tabs and delete them as well because the hyperlinks are going to be created on keynote itself and what i'm going to use is i'm going to use the master slide feature in keynote and therefore all my tabs just have to be used just have to be created on the master slide and thereafter it will appear on all the pages in that project and it makes it so much easier to just create the hyperlinks okay and therefore we are now if you find it a little confusing, not to worry, just follow through, stay with me, you will understand why I'm doing all this, okay? So, once again, objective to export this Canva project into Keynote to add hyperlinks. Why? Because if you're a Mac user, you want to, you can use Keynote to create hyperlink tabs instead of PowerPoint, okay? So what I'm trying to do is I'm just clicking to click and drag and every time you see me click and dragging this 
purple rectangle comes out and I'm just trying to delete the tabs without affecting the rest of my uh, elements on the page. Okay, so just selecting and deleting, selecting and deleting, clicking on the backdrop and also hitting the delete, delete button. Okay, it's just going to take a short while. There we go. And one last page to deal with. One more right here. Okay. So I also want to show you two things. One, I import this, sorry, I export this directly as a PowerPoint file. Okay. And the second method is to export this as individual PNG images. I'm going to show you what the difference is okay so let's do this we go to share and go to more and scroll down to find microsoft powerpoint so what it's going to do is i'm going to download this entire all these five pages in my canva project into a powerpoint file okay if you want to learn more about how to import and export different file types on canva itself I do have a video, okay? You can click on that and then watch that later. So now I have the PowerPoint file. Now we can actually, this is the PowerPoint file, right? And we've got five pages. Now I can actually import this PowerPoint file onto Keynote. So let me just get Keynote set up. We are now on Keynote and I have basically opened up this PowerPoint file on Keynote. What you are seeing right here, please direct your attention to the top right hand corner of my screen, replace missing font. So do you see, okay, I think I need to show you the difference. Let's go back here. Do you see I have this like slightly fancy script font that I used in Canva and then when I exported it as a PowerPoint file and then opened it in Keynote, what happened was that the font is gone. Okay, because the font doesn't, it's not a default font on my computer and therefore Keynote is not able to read it, it's not able to duplicate or present the font as it's supposed to be. So it's just replaced it with this, whatever font this is. Okay, now the other thing is, look at that, messed up. Okay, messed up. Let's see. This is the page that we have, Weekly Planner, everything nicely done on this page. However, after I import it into Keynote, mm, messy, okay? Layout is messy, notes, I mean, sorry, the font gets messy too, okay? So now, the solution is that you can actually just try to resize everything, right? Because these become editable templates, editable file, you can actually just resize them, click on them, and just move things around if you want to, right? However, it just imagine if you have more than five pages, you would have to go through every single page to make sure the font is properly replaced and everything, all the elements are properly aligned, which can be very, very tedious, okay? So this is the main problem that happens when you are exporting Canva into a PowerPoint file. Whether you open up the PowerPoint file in PowerPoint itself or what we're doing here, opening the PowerPoint file in Keynote, the same problem happens. The fonts get messed up, the elements get messed up, okay? So what is the workaround? Let's go back to Canva. Now, I know not everyone is a fan of unicorns. This is actually, there is actually a hidden frame in there or a grid in there. So it allows you to just drag and drop images and it auto populates this. Now, I love using grids because if you have a digital paper, let's say I have probably uploaded some kind of digital paper here, right here, like this one. All I have to do is click and drag it in. Do you see that? Very quickly. All you have to do is upload some digital papers that you like that allows you to use for commercial use purposes. My favorite go-to platform is Creative Fabrica, where you can actually download both free as well as paid commercial use graphics. Now, the best part is to just subscribe, like I do, to the All Access Pass, which allows you unlimited access to millions and millions of fonts, graphics, digital papers, SVG files. And did I mention graphics already? Yeah, so all sorts of all these graphics, right, that come with commercial use rights. So upload them and then use them safely, okay? If you have any questions or if you're a little un 
unfamiliar with Canva terms, please also watch my video, which I try to explain as much as possible Canva's terms of use. Okay, do watch that. Now, once again, I have the digital planner. I don't want the unicorn design and all I have to do is click and drag the digital paper and there you go. It's a very light watercolor design, right? It's very faint. Click and drag and it auto completes it. So it's so easy. I can just change the design very, very quickly and easily and it's not difficult at all, okay? It could probably be a little bit tedious if you have lots of pages to do that, but in all honesty, dragging and dropping the digital papers to replace the original unicorn design is, I would think, the fastest way to change the template into something totally different from my original design, okay? Now notice that the cover of my planner has, I mean, it's more, the colors are more vibrant, more vivid, whereas this is not so. So I can actually, that's because there is some adjustment of transparency. So you can just click on that image and then try to adjust the transparency and you can see the colors being more vivid now. Okay, so if, if you find that your colors of the digital paper that you have just dragged into uh, are too faint, just be sure to click on the element and and if you see this lock position just unlock it and go to the transparency slider and just adjust the transparency from there i do like um the colors to be more vibrant i think it looks more fun and attractive like this okay so let's add just some more lines to this and go to the grid view again on the bottom right hand corner and there you go you can see a thumbnail of all the pages that we have and it looks lovely five pages of digital planner now because i have shown you just now how when we export this as a powerpoint file and import it into keynote everything gets messed up right fonts gets messed up alignment gets messed up so now the better way could be that we export it as individual png files okay it would come in handy if you are a Canva Pro account user because when you go to share, top right hand corner, the button, click on download, make sure you're selecting the file type as PNG. And I love the ability as a Canva Pro account user to select this checkbox that says transparent background. Now, are you able to do it without transparent background? I suppose you can, but the final look will not be as pretty as if you download it with transparent background okay so i'm just going to show you both let's download all of them with transparent background let's download one set of that in png file once again i would strongly encourage you to actually consider getting the canva pro subscription because it does give you many good features including this downloading your images with transparent background now what if you don't have it the workaround just go to download download as PNG and, or if you want a lower file size, you know, if you have many, many pages and you're worried that the final product is very heavy in terms of file size, you can actually download as JPEG. So basically the PNG files gives you higher resolution. However, if you are actually downloading the images as PNG with transparent background, then it has to be PNG, okay? Once you click on JPEG right here, you don't see the checkbox anymore. You cannot select transparent background as a feature okay but if you want something more lightweight you can save those images as jpeg files instead so let's try this one so now we have saved two sets of images one set png files of these individual planner pages with transparent background second one save them as jpeg files okay no transparent background i'm going to show you how it will look differently when we import them onto keynote now we are back on Keynote. Now I would, um, because when I first designed the digital planner on Canva, I actually took into account the size or rather this border around the digital planner. Why? Let me just hit back here, okay? So this is the original version with um, the hyperlink tabs, right? And technically speaking, what I did was to have like a one inch border around it. Okay, so about one inch around it, which means it's gonna lengthen by two inch and it's gonna widen by two inch if I were to fit it as a US letter size planner. Now, somebody asked why US letter size? Also because 
I typically create printables for, um, I mean, when I create printables to sell online on my website, most of my audiences come from the US and therefore US letter size pages is more commonly used. And therefore I create my printables in US letter size dimensions. Now, but for the purpose of creating digital planners, I tend to prefer having a one inch border so that there is sufficient space around the planner and still sufficient space for the page itself to fill in the content of the planner page. Okay. So, um, in that case, right, for the purpose of repurposing printables, okay, let's say I've already created other planners in the printable version and I want to use that as a digital planner. What I can do is I can also just copy and paste the different pages and put them here. Okay. If that is confusing, scratch that. Okay. My objective is not to confuse you with that, but anyway, ultimately the actual size of your, uh, digital planner is not that important. You can just start with us letter size. You can do a four size, or you can actually use the dimensions of, let's say, um, your iPad, the iPad dimension, that's also fine. But even this one, it will open up nicely on the iPad pro, which is from what I know, the largest tablet that is available, the iPad pro 12.9. Okay. I think that would be the tablet with the largest screen. And even if you use a US letter size project to begin with, um, the resolution is not going to be really affected when you open up the US letter page on an iPad. All right. Now, where were we? Oh, the one inch. Okay. So what happened is, um, after that I exported the PowerPoint, right? Remember I exported the PowerPoint and I imported it into keynote and therefore it has now taken the dimensions of my original Canva template. Okay. Instead of having to meddle around with the slide size in keynote itself, the minute I export it, um, from Canva. Now my slide size is based on what we did or what I did in Canva itself. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and delete everything. I can delete all the other pages. The whole idea is I just want this particular size of the page. Okay. I just want this particular slide size, which I have gotten by importing the PowerPoint version of the Canva project. Now, because of the alignment issues, I have therefore saved my Canva template as images, right? PNG and JPEG file. So here, go to media, going to choose, let's see. Now this one is PNG and it's going to have transparent background. Okay. So let me just add a slide add a blank page and then import another version that is the JPEG version. Okay. Here, there we go. You cannot see the difference right now, but I'm going to show you how it will look different. Now we want to go into the master slide section where we, where that is where we will put in the hyperlink tabs. Okay. So when you click on one of the pages, you should see this slide layout. Okay. So if I were to see the drop down list, there are actually different slide layouts. And right now it is on the blank one. Now this is what we call the master slide and I can choose to edit the slide layout on the bottom right hand corner. There's this button that says edit slide layout. And now you see, we are on the master slide section. Now, if you're familiar with PowerPoint, PowerPoint also has this feature to edit in the master slide or slide master view. Okay. So similar principle, when you edit anything on the slide master or the master slide, in this case, it will automatically populate in all the pages using this particular slide layout. All right. So here we are on the blank page. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert an image that has like some kind of wooden digital paper so that it looks like the digital planner is on a wooden desk. And I have downloaded some wooden digital paper from creative Fabrica and I'm going to import it. So go to media and just going to choose the file on the downloads. Let's choose this one. So I'm just going to drag the image so that it fills up the entire page. Now this looks like the wooden background. Okay. So let's go back to at the bottom right hand corner, it says edit slide layout. And let me just click on done. Now do you see the difference? This one 
because it was saved as a PNG file with transparent background, the wooden background now shows up. However, on this particular page, it doesn't show up because this is actually a JPEG file. Okay, so what we can do is we can attempt to actually crop it. All right, we can just crop it to the edge, but it's not going to work so well for the binder. All right. Now, because when we want to add the, when we're going to add the tabs, right, we want them to look as realistic as possible. So it should be right with or hidden behind the planner. If you have a lot of white space, then it's not going to look nice. All right. So once again, if you don't have um, the Canva Pro account, do consider doing that. All right. Otherwise, I guess what you can do is you can choose a totally blank background and so that you forego um, the wooden background that's also possible, right? We can just make sure that we have the tabs because you can have a clean cut, just crop the image. You can have a clean cut at the top and a pretty clean cut on the side. So that's where you can add your hyperlink tabs as well. Otherwise, this one, because it's a PNG file with transparent background, it looks lovely, okay, against the wooden backdrop. So for now, I'm just going to use this and I'm just going to delete that just to show you the difference between saving an image with transparent background and one without, okay? So delete this slide. Now I am just going to add more slides and I'm going to use back the same slide layout with the wooden backdrop. Insert media, go to choose. Remember, I have five pages for this particular planner. So I'm going to insert them one by one on each page and it auto populates that particular position. So it, when I click, you see that the binder rings and the page frame, it doesn't move, right? So everything is neatly in place because the sizes are there. Add a new slide, choose the blank layout with the wooden backdrop and then just import another image. It fits right there. I don't have to worry about uh, resizing and all that. And just re rinse and repeat. So I know it's a little tedious because you have to import the images one page by one page. However, I do think this would actually be easier than having to go to every single page and changing the fonts and readjusting the elements, okay? So here, if you're done, you can actually just move things around. Like maybe I want a monthly planner on the second page, the weekly planner on the third and the daily planner and the notes pages like this. So this is just a simple five page digital planner. All right. So now that we have, it looks pretty decent. It looks nice. The digital planner on a wooden backdrop. Now we're going to add the hyperlink tabs. Okay. Now back to edit slide layout. This is where we're going to add the tabs. Whoops. Let me go back here first because I need to know where to position the tabs. So go to shape. You can have your tabs as round or square rectangle with sharp edges, or I prefer this one with rounded edges. So here you can also choose the color type. You can change the color fill, change the color styles and stuff like that. But I'm just going to keep it with purple because it kind of matches the rest of my color, you know, the rest of the colors in the digital planner. Now here, this is where I would want to have the home tab. Ctrl D to duplicate. I'm going to put this at a side where I can add tabs to the daily, weekly, monthly planners as well as the notes pages. So that's four tabs. Ctrl D to duplicate. Or maybe the home tab will just go to the monthly planner. So I only need three tabs right here. Now, if you're watching or if you have watched my digital planner masterclass, that particular YouTube video, um, the home tab actually goes to the index page because I have included hyperlinks to every single, almost every single page in the digital planner. Now that will be way too many to create tabs and therefore having an index page would be great. So the home button goes to the index page. Okay. So here I want the home button, the top tab to go to the monthly planner pages. I want the site tabs to go to daily, weekly and notes pages. Now, obviously I don't want the tabs to be on top of the page. It doesn't look nice. Click on one, hold down the shift key to select all of them. Control C or command C since we're using Mac to copy it. Just delete that. And we are going to edit slide layout. We are on a slide layout and just press command V to paste. 
Okay, that was the adjusted position, right? Because this, this is a blank page. I would have no idea how to place the tabs in the right position. So I had to go back to the page where the planner is, fix the position of the tabs, but paste them on the slide layout so that when we click done, do you see that? All the tabs appear on all the pages. Okay, so that is the beauty of using the slide layout. Okay, the master slide or slide master, however you call it, is very, very convenient because we have the nice wooden background and we have the tabs that appear at the at the back of the planner, which is better than being on top of it. Okay, so that's how it works. Now, of course, we are going to go back to edit slide. I'm just going to show you that, hey, these are the tabs that appear. Okay. Um, so basically anything that you put on the slide layout will appear on all the other pages with that selected slide layout. Now let's add hyperlink so we can add text, right? We can put it as month. Okay, month right here, day, maybe I want to try to turn it around, maybe like this, and control, command, sorry, command D to duplicate, here, type in week, And then Control D again for these this particular text box and put in as notes. Okay, I know it doesn't look the nicest, but that is not my objective here. My objective is to show you how to add the hyperlinks. Okay, so. There we go. Whatever that, whatever changes that we make on a slide layout will appear on every single page now because all of these pages have that particular slide layout. So next step is to add hyperlinks. Go back to edit slide layout. Now the thing about hyperlinks is it will work if it if the element with the hyperlink is on the topmost layer. So now when we are looking at this particular tab. It has the text box and it has the shape, right? But if you are only hyperlinking the words now, every time, which means the user have to be very precisely touching the text box before the hyperlink works. So if they touch any part of the tab, it doesn't work. So I guess you can either add hyperlinks to both the tab and the text box or you can add on another shape. You can duplicate this shape, but of course we want to make sure that it is transparent. No fill and no border as well. So it's now a transparent shape. And this is where I'm going to format, add link, and go to a slide. So you can actually add links to external websites or right now we're trying to interlink the different slides in this project. So go to slide. Now this one will go to slide number two, which is the monthly page. And there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to press command D to duplicate this invisible shape so that is right on top both the tab as well as text box go to format and edit links now now this one the daily planner should be on the fourth page so go to slide number four same thing click on this in the topmost layer is the invisible shape command d to duplicate it place it over here going back to format edit link and now the weekly page should be one two three page three go to slide three and hit enter and just repeat that again command d to duplicate this invisible shape overlay that and going to format going to edit link and we're going to page five okay so now hit enter and now we want to make sure that everything is in place so hit 
play so that you can kind of have a preview and you can test out your hyperlinks. Now, if you mouse over everywhere, it's a black arrow. However, if you mouse over a spot where there is actually hyperlinks, it turns into a little hand. So there we go. The tab at the top, click. It goes to the monthly planner page. Click on the daily planner. It goes to the daily planner. And click on the weekly tab and the note tab. And there we go. The hyperlinks are working well. Okay, this is great. Now, of course, if you're on your tablet, if you're just swiping the pages, just swipe and it flicks to the next page, okay? So that is it, guys. Now, just to be absolutely, absolutely certain, now, we are going to go to File. We are happy with this and we are going to Export. Save as, let's just go to Export PDF, all right? And then, just export it as PDF, hit next, wait for it to export, name it however you want, test, demo, and now. This is the exported PDF, and there we go. Hyperlinks are working. It is not a two-page spread, okay? It's just that in the preview form, it shows that way. But yes, we have the hyperlinks working. So Mac users, this is our solution okay this is your solution to using keynote to adding hyperlinks to kind of summarize everything again now i still love using canva to create the digital planners because of the ease of using graphics and it really allows me to create very beautiful designs okay it's easy to upload images and import graphics to actually create this design now but if you have more than two you have more than 300 pages in your digital planner adding the hyperlink tabs would be a problem. And therefore what we did, that we, you, we did the design on Canva, stripped down the backdrops, ignored the hyperlink tabs, exported this as P, individual PNG files with transparent background so that we can then import into Keynote without the worry of the fonts and the elements going haywire. And then in Keynote, we added we imported an image of the wooden backdrop and we added the tabs all done in the slide layout section. Edit slide layout, just add to it. And then there we go. Okay. So click done. Everything on the slide layout will appear on every single page in this particular project. And there you have it. Now, if you're having trouble about the slide layout, you just have to make sure that you're selecting the correct slide. As you can see, there are actually different slide layouts that you can create. But in this case, we only have that one slide layout. So we added a wooden backdrop as well as the tabs on this particular slide layout. So you have to make sure that all your pages have the correct slide layout. So for example, if I choose this, then of course it's not going to appear. The tabs are not going to appear. So make sure you have selected the correct slide layout, add the hyperlinks on the slide layout, and that's it okay hyperlinks work if you want to make sure make sure to check the hyperlinks before you export them if you've got tons of hyperlinks check along the way just to make sure you have things going on correctly okay and the other thing i want to bring draw your attention to again remember I mentioned if you add hyperlinks to just the text it's a very small area if people touch on other areas of the tab it's not going to work Okay, therefore, my solution is to add on a transparent shape on top that overlaps the text box as well as the tab. Why? Because the hyperlinks need to appear on the element on the highest layer, on the topmost layer. Okay, so that would be the workaround at the invisible shape, hyperlink that invisible shape. And there we go, the hyperlinks will work from there, okay? So I do hope that you find this video to be helpful. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I will try my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I would very much appreciate it if you could like this video, like, follow, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for more helpful Canva tutorials. I'll see you around.